Animal welfare can be a contentious issue, particularly as it relates to food animals where regulation and popular opinion aren't always in agreement. I am your TAG Talks host, Lisa Lupo, and today I'm talking with TAG's Food Safety Director, Sam Davidson, about the current state of animal welfare. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, Lisa. So Sam, why are animal welfare regulations and popular opinion so often at odds? Uh, it's a really good question. I, I think um, there are there are a number of reasons. I, I think probably the number one reason is um, consumers are are becoming more and more distant from uh, from where food is being produced. They don't really understand how food is produced anymore. You tend not to have that connect. Um, I was at a conference once, and and people believed that they're poultry the sort of the, the meat birds the the broilers lived in the same type of cages as the egg layers uh so that that's that's one example and and then they're so disconnected from that but yet see information or or photographs from animal welfare groups or activist groups and then they're horrified by what they see and they feel that um the industry is being mean to animals which of course is not because um, industry cannot afford to be mean to their animals or be abusive to them because uh, they lose out. You know, it, it, it's their um, livelihood. So they have to treat their animals as best as possible. Um, I think in some scenarios, and there's definitely lots of occasions where I, where, where I, could, where I could pull up, where, you know, people see it as being mean, um, gestation crates, uh, conventional housing for egg layers. But when these came in, now, in fairness, quite a while ago, it was based on science. Um, you would have the legs of the, the, the conventional cages for egg layers was so that the birds, it's easier to control disease. Um, it stops the, uh, uh, the hens pecking at each other. So there was, there was welfare at mind at the time, but um, I think science and industry need to get together as well and, and, and keep moving forward, which is definitely happening now. There has definitely been a, uh, a definitely a resurgence in, in what can and should be done now with animals. The same with gestation crates. Um, we now see there's better methods. Um, and it, it, it does come down to a lot of um, science and, and farmers, I guess, and their stockmanship levels, how good they are at managing their animals and, and understanding where those, I guess, pain points can come from and, and how to reduce them. Okay. So what are some of the current key issues and regulatory actions in the US, Canada and the EU? Yeah, well, um, even further field, actually, I just got a, a, a message this morning or I saw a message this morning around, uh, even in China, where they're looking at welfare practices and um, okay. they believe that, um, Consumers believe that um, animal welfare practices produce better quality and, and higher food safety. So labeling comes into place there where, the, where there is that perception. And I guess it goes back to, I, I would not say food safety is, is something that uh, benefits or animal welfare benefits from food safety. Either way, I wouldn't agree with that. Um, but there are, yeah, there's definitely... A, it, it's definitely a global movement, I guess, but some are faster than others. So, for example, Australia recently announced the removal of conventional cages for hit, for for layer hands, but that's not going to be until 2036. So oh. in some ways it gets pretty slow, right? <laughs> yeah. um, the EU, the Food Safety Authority, uh, the European Food Safety Authority has, has performed some scientific research, and they are now reporting that they, they recommend the removal of gestation crates. Um, they are talking about banning tail docking in, in pigs. Um, and they do have legislation coming out in 2023, which will include um, other areas, uh, other animals, uh, sheep, goats, horse, cattle, as well as transportation issues. Okay. Um, going back to, to tail docking, again, it's one of these things that it happens, animals do it to themselves when they're stressed out, but then other pigs will bite tails of, of their animals or their, their I guess, their, their co-pen um, uh, associates. Um, so there becomes an issue there as well, where there is a, that fear is reintroduced when another pig will bite another pig's tail. 
Um, again, that goes down to stockmanship and managing property. Um, closer to home, um, we do have uh, Canada is investing in animal welfare. They are looking at the um, methods of transportation of livestock. And we'll go into that a little bit in a because there's a CFIA rule that came out this year. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also uh, implementation or money going into RFID tagging for, for cattle traceability. And then the Canadian Poultry and Egg Association, um, they have been granted some money as well to improve their uh, welfare programs. Uh, going back to the transportation rules, CFIA brought in the rules this year um, around transport regulations and especially around uh, cattle and uh, calves. Um, and this also brings up a, 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 an issue between, um, I guess, industry and, and versus science versus regulations um, and public perception, I guess. Uh, cattle can be moved at, at quite long intervals without, um, without food, water and rest. And, you know, from it was up to 42 hours, they're now reducing it to 36 hours. Yeah. Um, so um, additionally, calves um, are in this regulation and um, they can be confined for a maximum of 12 hours without food, um, water or rest. So they're trying to reduce that now down to um, eight hours, five or eight hours. Um, now, the, the, there does become this, this issue with um, when they have these break periods, they should be uh, offloaded and given a rest area and given some time to rest during this time. But then there comes the other issue about unloading and loading cattle. Um, that can cause stress, can cause potential injuries, slips, falls, trips. And, and that's what we do uh, when performing animal welfare audits is to identify that as well. So again, where you have, I guess the rules are there for a reason, but at the same time, they can cause issues. So CFA are um, uh, being flexible around it, I guess, and the most important thing is that they are really uh, trying to go science-based or fact-based and, and looking at what, what the results are for this. Risk-based, I really guess you, you, should, you should call it, um, to see what's happening during the, uh, the, the implementation of these rules. Now, in the U.S., there's, um, there's also a couple of areas where um, I think a lot of people are aware of, the, of Proposition 12 in California and the Massachusetts question three about mm -hmm. the confinement of animals um, that's still ongoing Massachusetts aren't going to go anywhere until they hear what's happening with the California proposition that has gone to Supreme Court um, USDA is talking about organic livestock and, and poultry rule and labeling around it uh, some of their uh, points are um, if you want to say that they're if it's organic, then they, you cannot use screened areas and count them as outdoors. Okay. Again, there comes an issue around disease prevention and safety of the animals if they're if they if they're exposed to the environment. Um, there are saying no longer debeaking birds, tail docking of pigs again, face branding and gestation crates. crates. So they want to get rid of all those practices. Uh, they do want purchase pert. I'll try it again. Pert purchase for the hen layers and environmental enrichment for pigs. Um, again, USDA are talking about 15 years for this. Consumers would like to see a three year period. So it's again, this sort of area around consumers and what's practical. Obviously it takes a lot for farmers, a lot of money and potentially time for them to do this. If they've invested a lot of money in certain equipment, then they have to be given time to uh, get their money back on that equipment and start investing in more. Okay. And then uh, uh, one more thing that I, that I found out just in the last month or so, there's um, NAMI, the North American Meat Institute, have implemented or have released a, a new study called Protein Pact, Pact okay. standing for the people, animals, and climate of tomorrow. And it's part of a uh, sustainability program. Um, but part of that sustainability program is animal welfare. Um, and it's part of the... 202, 2022 Continuous Improvement Report. Um, and they've got quite a good uptake in members around animal welfare. They're saying 86% of their members and 100% of large processors, which is 2,000 employees or more, took part in the survey. 72% uh, use NAMI-approved animal welfare programs. 
71% are passing those third-party animal welfare audits. And the, the, the big talking point at the minute is the transportation programs, and 70% 70, 70 are involved in that as well. Okay. Um, so it, it's interesting, you know, and, and although there, there can be issues in talking about the CFA and the cattle one, you know, I think industry has to get on board again with science. What we see with the movement of poultry, they've got climate-controlled trailers now, and with swine and pigs, they have... Um, lift systems within the trailers to avoid any stress or or tr slips, trips and falls with, with the animals. So I guess it's a mix of everyone get together, science and, and regulatory agencies and producers getting involved and then maybe uh, the proper information or a, a, a proper balance of information for consumers. Uh, I think industry needs to get involved with that um, and that will balance what they see from animal welfare activists. Okay. Sounds like there's certainly a lot going on um, from all sides and, uh, you know, appreciate your your comments on kind of some of the things that could be done. Like you said, it's a, probably a matter of, of information and uh, communication and, and some of the misinformation that's out there and, and, you know, being sure that both sides know the real story. So that's really great. For sure. So thank you so much, Sam, for providing this update on animal welfare and the current status of humane treatment and some of the comments about what, uh, what maybe we should all be doing from here. And thanks to the viewers for joining us today and feel free to call on Sam or any of our experts for questions or assistance on animal welfare compliance and brand protection. And as always, be sure to cl click subscribe to stay up to date on all things food safety and public health from CAG experts. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa.